Hey there and welcome to the Art Lab. My name is Andy and today we're going to be looking at creating ocean art with resin. So this is my New Zealand, where I'm from, and today we're going to be going through step by step on how I created this artwork. Before we jump into that however, if you're not a subscriber already, I'd love for you to join my art journey. So hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you can get notified when my weekly videos are uploaded. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So the very first part of the process is to build your islands. In my case I've used my 3D printer here to print out a map of New Zealand and I've made this about 4mm high. That's just going to give me some height so that when the resin is poured that it doesn't cover this map. I then use some PVA glue to stick these down onto my round MDF board. Now I've already painted this board black and that's just going to help put some depth to the ocean colour that I'm going to put in afterwards. So here's a nice little tip for you, with the lime of these islands I went and put some painter's tape around the extremities which meant that it made it nice and easy for me to line that up once I had the PVA glue on them. Once that PVA was dry then it's just a matter of removing those and it's ready for the next stage. Step 3 of the process is to cover the 3D print with some modeling paste. Using modeling paste allows me to just build contours and show the definition of these islands. This could be a bit of a long process so I've sped up the video for you. So this step kind of had two parts. The first part was really putting down the base layer of modeling paste and then the second part once that first layer was dry was to go back and add another layer and then add the contours. So I'm just using a sponge here to go and add I guess kind of like hills to the island and I've got some particular parts of New Zealand which I need to make a little bit more prominent. So this first one here is Mount Taranaki and that is a nice volcano in the middle of New Zealand. There's also uh, Mount Rupaio and Narahoe which I'll be doing as well as creating a little crater to put Lake Taupo in. In the South Island then you've got the Southern Alps that run down the spine of the country so I'm just trying to make sure that those become prominent features as well. By putting the trowel down on the wet modeling paste and sort of pulling it up it creates a little bit of a suction which creates kind of like these mountain type ridges which is exactly what I was after for this piece. Step 4 of the process is all about painting. Now once again this goes in multiple uh, phases within the steps so the first one is to put that base layer of green down across the whole of the island and after that to go and add the additional details such as the darker forest areas and the lighter areas where there might be uh, lots of rocky stones etc. So I'll just use my mobile phone here to help me with the reference of where those different colours come into play. And of course you can't forget that last little bit of detail which is the snow capped mountains. So this is where you go around with your white to go and cap those areas of New Zealand which have those high peaks and often have snow such as Mount Taranaki, the 
Mount Rupehu, Narahoe, and also down the Southern Alps. Of course, this is specific to New Zealand, so doing your own islands, you have the creativity to do what you want and how you want to colour them. Now we've done all our prep work to get our island completed, it's now time to move on to the ocean art. I'm using three different colours with this, so I've got a black to go around the edge of the map, and then two blues, one a lighter blue, and one a kind of aqua marine blue. The lighter blue I put around the edge of the islands, and that will give us a nice sort of depth perception here, with a darker blue to go in the middle. New Zealand has a large lake in the middle of the country called Lake Taupo and I've saved a little bit of blue resin to go in and fill up the little indent I created for this lake area. So once you've laid your resin down, the next bit is to really just mix that resin together. Now the easiest way I've actually found that to do this is to use your gloved hand and just use your finger and go through and just mix those different layers with your finger. Now you can use a hairdryer, that can become hard to control but just this initial mixing, if you go through and use your finger to go and make that mix and then those colours will just sort of blend together naturally. Of course don't forget to get that flame out and pop all those bubbles that may be rising to the surface. Once the resin has dried it's now time for I think we're up to step 6 and that's to obviously remove the tape around the edge which kept that resin in place and to do the layer of resin which is going to give a little bit of a wave effect. Now key thing here and this is where I'm still learning in this resin space, you learn new things every day, is that I probably went a little bit too overboard on using the white to give a wave effect. So obviously a lesson for myself to learn for next time is to use less white and probably to dispense it maybe in something more like a syringe rather than just in the cup where you just have limited control. So just to take a little step back on this step, so of course first you put a layer of clear around where you want these waves to be and then you put your uh, line of white. That then means when you blow it that the white blows into the clear and gives you that sort of frothy um, wavy look. Before I blow the resin with a hairdryer or a heat gun, then I'm just giving it a quick blast with some flame to, to warm it up, try to create some cells in the white that I've got here.
next here I'm just putting some resin across the islands themselves and that's just to seal those and also some of that resin can run down onto the waves and maybe push them out a little bit as well. Now there's a bit of a debate in the resin world whether to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to sort of create your waves. I've seen people use both of these to create effect. Uh, I do like the hairdryer normally has a bit more power but then the heat gun has a bit more heat to um, sort of create cells etc. So really it's up to you and just have to experiment. Um, once again here I think I used a bit too much white and so I didn't really get the effect that I really wanted but it still came out um, pretty, pretty well. Alright so we're getting closer to the end, not there yet, a few more steps to go. So one of the things by using tape around the edge is that you get that lip when resin dries, so it dries around the centre but it's sort of not as much around the edge. So to fix that then you sand. So I'm just using my orbital sander here to go around the edge and make that edge the same level as the rest of the resin and then that will allow me to put a final top coat of clear resin across the whole lot. So for the final step in the process here, once again I've taped the edge of this artwork and what that will allow me to do is to hold that resin to a higher level and then before it's dried I will remove the tape and I'll let it drip down over the edge. So my resin normally cures in about 20 minutes so I've left it for about 10 minutes to cure at this stage and then remove the outer tape. This will then let the uh, remaining resin just drip over the edges a bit and I'll be able to give that edge a run around with my fingers as you'll see in a second to coat the outside of the artwork. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Don't forget if you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can see more videos like this one. If you found this video helpful, you may enjoy this video right here, so go and check that one out next. Thanks for joining me in the art lab. Until next time, keep creative.